Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Bright Connections. I'm BK. Joining me once again, Andy. Andy, how you doing? Good, man. It's good to be back. Uh, good to see you again, and thanks again for for having me on a second time. Hey, you bet. You bet. It's uh, so. Last time we talked. Uh, Sydney Crosby, and this time we're talking hockey yet again. I guess we're we're two Shocker. hockey, yeah, we're two <laughs> hockey gurus. We love our hockey, and uh, we just there's there's so much to talk about. So today uh, we're really going to be diving into uh, the expansion draft that just happened recently in the NHL. Uh, kind of what we think about it, what we think about the team, and um, you know how we think it's going to work, and how we think that the expansion drafts do work, and all that stuff. So. Uh, but before we jump into that, uh, last episode was about the Olympics, and so obviously we've we've progressed further in the Olympics. And I'd like to touch on a few things um, that I thought were just really cool, really intriguing. So um, obviously you've got all these people uh, showing their emotion and their passion uh, each and every day that they're out there competing. Uh, but there's there's been a couple instances that, for me at least, that have really struck me as just where humanity kind of just rises above and the competition part. And you're just, you know, people consoling each other, you know, when they lose or, or celebrating with each, with each other, when they, when they win, you know, you know, somebody that comes in in second, just behind the first place person, they're, they're just as happy. They're, they're almost looks like they're, they're happy for the person that won too. And it's just really, it's really cool to see. It's really humbling. It's really, uh, it shows that, Yes, you're out there competing. Yes, you're out there doing your very best. You're putting your whole heart and soul into this, but you're still maintaining that sense of, um, like I said, humanity. Just, just understanding the the person across from you is is just as into it and just as devoted to it as you are, and being able to accept that and celebrate or console with them is is truly amazing. I really have enjoyed seeing those moments. Um, Andy, I know you say you haven't really watched too, too much, but, um, there was a, a, one instance for sure that really hit me. So there was a, um, woman in the triathlon that was competing and she was from Bermuda. Her name is Flora Duffy and she won the gold medal for Bermuda in the triathlon. And that is Bermuda's first ever gold medal in the Olympics, any sport, any any year, any Olympics, any history, it just period. Any first gold medal for her country. Not only is that amazing in its own that she was able to, to complete that feat, but her first instinct when she won was to turn around and cheer on the people coming in behind her. And then as soon as they did cross, you know, celebrating with them and and just basking in, in the whole scene of of winning a triathlon, running a triathlon. And it just, it really hit me that she spent more time either celebrating with the other people or consoling those who, who may have come in like fourth or fifth or whatever, you know, just missed out on a medal. Doing that more than celebrating herself and, and with her coaches or teammates or whatever, she spent more time with others, devoted to others than, than celebrating on her own. And it was absolutely amazing. I mean, it was the first, first medal that her country has ever won in the Olympics, first gold medal. And she, and it, and it, obviously I'm sure it was amazing to her, but it's, again, it's just more about the other people, the other human beings competing with her than about mm -hmm. herself. Yeah, that's really cool. And, and like you said, I mean, this is the first time they've won a gold medal in anything. And, you know, when you have a first like that, like that, that's a pretty big deal you know, you're kind of, you're, you're the icon for that nation, you know, yeah. and for her to cheer the other people on is, is really cool. And it shows, you know, how great, how many great moments we see in the Olympics. Um, I think the one thing, you know, when you see the Olympics, you see what country they're from and you just automatically assume that everybody is so different, but in reality, they're actually all very similar. You know, they're all going for the same goal, they train all the time to be in the Olympics, you know, so they're very similar just because they're from different countries. That doesn't mean much. So I think it's kind of cool for them to root for each other. And, and I think having that healthy competition is good, you know, because you know that you have to constantly push yourself to be the best. And I think that um, more than ever in the Olympics, we, we always see that where, you know, people are just being their best version of themselves and they're pushing each other. And I think that, um, 
that's something that we need to appreciate more a little bit. I think with the Olympics is just all of these people working so hard and, you know, in sports, like we're going to be talking about hockey later, these players, they have, they have a season to play every year, you know, they're playing all the time. Whereas these people, you know, they're kind of focused on just the Olympics four years ahead. So it's a little bit of a different timeline for them. So yeah, that's just really cool to see that, you know, there's all these great moments and, and that's definitely one of the better ones I would say. So that's yeah. uh, just, just really cool. Yeah. And as a great point that you talked about four years and like you said, a lot of sports, they've got their seasons. Olympics are only around once every four years and you might right. only be able to make it to one Olympics, right? You might only be only in one event. You're preparing your whole entire life for potentially just an hour or maybe even if you're like a swimmer and you only have one event, swimming a minute long two minutes long whatever you're preparing your whole life for those two minutes it's a lot of pressure <laughs> it's a yeah it's a lot of pressure i'm sure it's a lot of emotion whether you win whether you lose um and that's where that's where it comes in where you're you're able to understand that as fellow competitors fellow um lovers of the sport that you're that you're competing in um uh, that that you understand what it's like being on the other end of it, whether you win, whether you lose, the, the, mm -hmm. how much you've prepared for it, how much you've put into this. And like I said, just, just consoling with each other and, and celebrating with each other, whatever it is, it, it's truly, truly amazing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think the um, relationship part of the Olympics is cool too. You know, I, I've heard a lot of like different interviews with coaches and athletes and stuff they talk about like the atmosphere at the olympic village like getting to meet all these different athletes and i think that um that's a big part of the olympic experience so you know i feel like all the athletes get to know each other really well and and you know they end up cheering for each other so it's this pretty cool environment where you can bring everyone like that in a global stage and you know you get to see the best of the best around the world and you know you get to learn about all of these athletes and their stories and all the things that they've done in their life just to prepare for this one moment like you said it could be a minute two minutes it's uh it's incredible yeah yeah, it's a great point with the relationships thing. Because as you think about it, you got all these people from different countries. And, you know, in the world itself, countries might not fully agree on things, you know, they, mm -hmm. with differences in, in, in aspects. But when you get to a, an event like this, where even though you're from a different country, and you, you, I've seen examples of it where you, people from different countries, they're, they look like they're friends, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I don't know if if they may know each other from, from outside the Olympics, they, some people compete in, in leagues together or whatever from different countries, but some may not. And like you said, you, if you meet in the, in the Olympic village and, and you become friends with somebody, you just put all those differences aside. You, you put everything between your countries aside and you're just, you're here together. You're, you're relishing the moment. You're celebrating each other's success of being there. Even, you know, that's a mm -hmm. big, that's a big enough achievement in its own. Yeah, uh, but just, you know, absolutely amazing that that people were able to put everything aside and just be friends and just compete mm -hmm. with each other at a, a friendly level and and just appreciate each other. It's yeah, truly, truly amazing. Um, you know, I've seen I've also seen a couple of uh, unfortunately, you know, a couple of, of injuries uh, in yeah. the Olympics. You know, it, again, people have prepared their entire life for this one moment mm -hmm. and you get injured. Uh, there was a lady I saw. Uh, in a badminton match and uh you know she got hurt and you could just see the absolute just emotion on her face and her her opponent you know instantly was came you know came up was consoling her just just talking to her saying you know i'm so sorry you know i wish you all the best all this you know all this stuff and it's tough but at the same time you know stuff like that it does happen you know there's there's going to be injuries especially in sports where they're they're putting their bodies at the, the full level of, of effort and um you know for for other people to appreciate or console or, or um you know check on because I, I saw you know um in the one of the uh, volleyball players for the u.s she got injured too and and you can see just the outpour of support and and best wishes for for her um around the world you know people send in messages and, and tweets and all this stuff to her to, to get better and hope she's doing well and all that. And, um, you know, you, you'll get that on a daily basis, but at the same time, um, I, you know, I noticed that there were people from other, other countries and stuff too. So that's, again, you're putting all those differences aside and, and you're just 
you're consoling uh, with somebody who, who is devastated. You know, he could be devastated getting an injury, you know, all this, all this preparation. And um, so it's just, it's just putting everything aside, just, just understanding and appreciating each other. And uh, it sets a good example. You know, it sets a good example for us in life. You know, you could have differences with somebody. You could have differences of opinion. You could have differences of, of heritage, of, of religion, of, of uh, you know, anything, differences of, of anything in your life. You could still put that aside and connect with somebody on, on mm-hmm. a level um, and just appreciate what they're going through in their life, uh, whether it be, you know, work or, or competitions or whatever it is, you know, you can be a friend, you can be, uh, you can respect somebody, uh, even though you don't agree with them, you know, don't agree with their opinions or, or what they believe in or anything, you know, it's, it sets, I, hopefully it sets a good example, you know, mm-hmm. seeing these people competing, you know, competition brings out not angry emotion, but, you know, competitive juices, you know? Oh yeah. And being able to put those aside and appreciate things, it, like I said, hopefully it sets a good example for the outside world too. You could be competing mm-hmm. with somebody in a sport and um, something might happen in the, in the game and you get upset, but you still, at the end of the day, got to be able to put that aside and, and respect the other person and just appreciate, mm-hmm. you know, the, the hard work that they're putting in as well. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And speaking for myself, I, I'm a very competitive person. Uh, and, you know, when I'm playing a sport, I, I definitely get very competitive, but I know there's been times where, you know, somebody gets hurt or um, just somebody needs some support. Maybe they had something happen. You know, it's, it's really important to put all of that aside and, and just be a friend, you know, because yeah. we all, we're all human. We all have our own things going on in life. And a lot of times you don't know the full picture of what's going on with everyone. So um, it's really important to just be there for someone if they're really going through something. Um, that example that you mentioned, like training, you know, for so long, just for this one chance at the Olympics, and then you get hurt, it has to be devastating. And so, um, you know, it's really good to have a support system and, you know, people to lift you back up. Obviously, you know, you're still not going to be thrilled with what happened, but <laughs> right. at least you're, you know, you have support, you have believers and, and hopefully, you know, that athlete will be able to get even stronger, you know, for the next Olympics. Yes. Um, so it's kind of the mentality that you have to have, you know, in order to get over something like that, because it's, yes, it's, it's physically, obviously you have an injury, but it can be really mentally damaging as well. And I think if you have that support that can really lead you and, and get you back up, um, to where you need to be and maybe even stronger, you know, who knows? So, you know, I yeah. think it's really a mental thing in addition to, you know, physical as well with an injury. Yeah. Support, support is just a huge, a huge thing that you can do for somebody, uh, whether it be positive, uh, as far as, you know, some supporting something that they did good or something that, that happened to them that is unfortunate, um, uh, support is just, it goes such a long way and it's such, it's such a simple thing to do just sending a, a simple message, just going over and, and consoling them. And when they get hurt, you know, saying, you know, sorry that this happened. I wish you all the best, something like that. It's, it's huge. It's truly huge. Like you said, it's, it's not only physical, but it's, it's mental, it's emotional. And, um, you know, for me, I, I'm definitely a very emotional person. And, and the more support that somebody gets, um, the more motivated they are, the more, um, happy they are the more they the more likely they are to turn around and provide support for others and it, and it just continues this same concept we've been doing for you know with bright connections the whole entire time um the more you do for others the more they're going to recognize that and hopefully turn around and do it for somebody else too so mm-hmm. so those are some of the uh, more brighter moments from the olympics other than just you know seeing these amazing athletes win medal after medal, um, Katie Ledecky, <laughs> crazy, crazy good. But, um, just there's these, these moments that you just, it takes a step back from competition and just brings you back to life and being human again. And really good to see, really good to see. I've really enjoyed those moments. So, all right. So, um, like I said, at the beginning of the episode recently, we had a expansion draft in the NHL. The 32nd team has now joined the NHL, the Seattle Kraken. They're here. Release the Kraken. 
We're here. <laughs> release, release the Kraken. Um, so before we talk into the draft itself, um, do you, in general, for any sport, do you think that expansion drafts work? Are they the right way to go as far as bringing a new team in? Is there another way? Um, how, you know, how difficult is it on the other teams? Stuff like that. You know, how, wh- what do you think of expansion drafts, Andy? Yeah, it's such a good question. I just, I've been thinking about this a lot. And, um, you know, I think, unfortunately, if you look at it, I, I don't know if there's any other ways to go about it, you know, because obviously, if you do have a, if you do have a new team, obviously, they're going to need players. And um, I don't think it's a great system to have just <laughs> every free, free agent. <laughs> yeah, every free agent to go to that team, or I was trying to think of like alternatives to it. Yeah. Um, and, but I was also kind of looking at it in this lens too, is that each league is very different. So for example, the NHL, they have a salary cap, they have a salary floor. It's, you know, I feel like they, especially since Crosby has come into the league, that the the competitiveness is at an all time high, you know, there's definitely um, a lot of like really good teams. I know we've been seeing some of the same teams over and over win it, but I still feel like, Every year, almost every team it has a chance to at least make the playoffs or yes. um, be competitive. And so with a salary cap system, I think that really helps because obviously, you know, teams can't just stack up and pay a bunch of guys like you see, like in baseball with like the Yankees and the Dodgers. And right. um, it's a very different structure in the yes. NHL. So, but then <laughs> it's funny because I was kind of looking back at some of the expansion drafts previous to this and previous to Vegas and it was completely different like if you look back at um the San Jose Sharks like when they came in and some of those teams like I think it was in like maybe the early 90s late 90s um uh, Atlanta Thrashers yeah the Thrashers right all these teams um the the roles were completely different um because I know when the Sharks came in they had some weird thing where it was something with the Minnesota North stars and they, they picked some of the Minnesota North stars. And then the other teams in the NHL, they were able to protect I'm trying to remember how many it was a lot more, I think a ton more. Yeah. yeah. Like it's not even close. Like I yeah. think it was around like 16 players or something. Each team could, you know, could protect. And so when you're doing that, <laughs> that's your, uh, whole, you're not, that's your you're, whole roster. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to get many great play. The expansion team, is not going to get many great players. Yeah. So, and then now when you look, when you fast fast forward with this year and and Vegas too, you know, you're only picking, you know, the the teams can't protect as many players. Um, So obviously the expand that benefits the expansion uh, team. So I don't know. It's a, it's a tough question because I feel like as much as it stinks for every NHL team to, you know, lose some potentially good players. Um, I also think it, it definitely allows the team, the expansion team to come in and potentially be competitive. I mean, heck Vegas, they were made the Stanley cup final their yes. first year, yes. which that was going to be hard to replicate, but yeah, yeah, that was a, that was a unique situation. But I also think that Vegas like really uh, took advantage of a lot of stuff with like all the trades that they made and yeah. uh, things like that. So You know, I think with the NHL specifically, I think, I think I I do, I do kind of like the expansion draft because I think that it, it for, first of all, it forces teams to be more strategic with certain, with their assets and, you know, try to figure things out. I also think that, you know, if I'm someone that lives in Seattle or if I'm someone that lives in Las Vegas, like I'm really excited that, you know, you're getting some really good NHL players. And these are two, two markets I would say Seattle, maybe even more than Vegas. Seattle's a really good sports town. So I feel like, you know, bringing that excitement to Seattle, bringing the excitement to Las Vegas is good for the league. And I think that, you know, anytime there's an effort to grow the game of hockey, I think, you know, we should always take that. And I think Seattle and Las Vegas both are going to be great. Uh, you know, well, Las Vegas has already been successful, right. but right. but I think Seattle eventually down the line will be very successful, but I think they're going to get a lot of fan support. I think they already sold out like season tickets or something yeah. already. So, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's a tough question, but I, I do think 
when you're looking at hockey specifically, I think it's a, uh, it's a pretty good system. I know that it, it, it stinks for, you know, Penguins fans like us, we had to lose some guys, but you know, at the same time, it's, you're adding to the game, you're growing the game and there's more jobs too. Right. So now more people will be able to come in and, and, uh, and join organizations and, and be a, an NHL player, coach, broadcaster, whatever it is. Yes. yes. So, yeah, so that's another aspect thinking about it. You know, you already have this, this league and these teams established, as you continue to expand a league more and more teams, you know, how do you feel about that with, with your, you know, you could, you could argue that you're dissolving the top level talent on each team. Yeah. Um, you know, if you, if you expect, you keep expanding the NHL ends up being 50 teams, you know, how do you feel about that? Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I do think there's a limit, you know, like I feel like the NHL is getting to a point now where I, I don't feel like, I feel like they should stop with the expansion now, now that they have, you know, this Seattle, but you're right. You know, you, you definitely, when you're doing that teams can't always just sign, you know, guys all the time, they may have to trade. Um, I think the good thing is though, is that you're seeing so many more young players just being able to come up and contribute right away. Um, whereas in the past that wasn't really a trend. It was more, okay, you know, you get two or three years in the AHL and then you come, you come up to the NHL. Whereas now, you know, you're seeing a lot more guys coming, coming up pretty quickly. Um, even after they're drafted, some of them. So, you know, I think there's, there's definitely some pros and cons with it, but, you know, I think you're just trying to grow the game of hockey, um, trying to make the league better and, and expand it to as many, cities as you can as many good markets as you can and you know the goal is always always to grow the game and i think you know this will do that um so but like like you were saying i I would never want it to be like 50 teams or anything like that like i feel like that would just be too much because you know there's only i feel like if you do that then you're going to have some teams that are, are probably going to struggle they're going to have people that um they may have teams that just may not have enough talent but i still feel like where the nhl is at right now i'm I'm pretty comfortable because as you see i know we'll talk about seattle's team soon here but you know they they definitely have a a decent a decent team they have some good players uh to build around and they're also kind of building for the future with draft picks and stockpiling those types of assets so i think the nhl is in a good place right now but in terms of expanding more i'm a little bit hesitant on that just because i feel like they they might be at the um maximum right now i i would feel a little bit uh i'd be a little worried if there was another team coming just because i feel like all these teams are just going to continue to lose players and i i just don't know if it'd be best for the sport after this one all right i'll, I'll throw out a counter opinion to that all right um yes i definitely understand uh dissolving the talent but at the same time I feel like there's a lot of players out there that we don't know about that are, you know, that, that could a hundred percent compete in the league. And if yeah. you, if you expand the league further and further, they do get that chance. You know, there's, there's so many hockey players out there. There's so many, uh, you know, sports players in general. And the more you expand, the more you, you leave opportunity for these people that in a small league don't get that opportunity. But if you have a bigger league, you never know, you know, you might find these guys that, that with a 32 team league might never make it in the NHL, but with a a 40 league team, they might, and they might be successful. You just never know. It's the same kind of thing with, with like undrafted players, you know, you, you don't hear about them. They don't get scouted. They, they miss being drafted in the draft and then they somehow find their way onto a team and are completely successful. You know, Mm -hmm. there's just, there's so much talent out there. There's so many people with a lot of talent and then, then the, the work ethic, you know, deser- deserving to, to have a chance. Um, it's tough to say, honestly, because you don't know if you do expand a lot, you might get that, that thing where you said there's teams that just completely aren't, aren't competitive. Um, but at the same time, I, I don't know. I, I feel like there's just a ton of talent out there that yeah. you might find these guys that otherwise would not have made it. And if you expand the league more and more, you know, they, they, they might reach the surface and, and prove you're wrong. So, yeah. 
it's it's an intriguing point and it's a tough it's a tough thing for a league to determine you know how do they know um where to stop or where to start um, yeah yeah obviously it's it's finding cities with with the means to uh support you know a team and everything um but at the same time you know there's there's the whole aspect of of uh the the pool of talent and you just it's hard to determine how mm-hmm. deep the pool can really be yeah no, it's a fair point for sure. And I, um, I don't envy the people that have to make these decisions because, <laughs> uh, it's hard, but you know, you make a good point though, about opening chances up for players. And, you know, you saw that with Vegas when they came in, you know, like a guy like, um, like William Carlson, for example, yep. I had no idea who that guy was when he yep. was drafted, but then man, after that first year in Vegas, uh, I, I knew who knew, a lot of people knew about him then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so there, there was a lot of that and heck even Vegas, they called them like the Island of misfit toys. I think at one point, because they were just all of these players that were decent, you know, like guys like Perron and uh, Neil, James, Neil, David Perron, you know, these types of people, the guys that have had success in the past, they weren't protected by their team. So they kind of felt like, you know, well, I, I got a kind of chip on my shoulder now, you yeah. know, and Vegas took them and, wow, just an unbelievable debut year. So it is good because you may see some guys that maybe they didn't get as many opportunities as they deserved on their one team. Maybe they were blocked by someone, uh, by someone else in that position. And now when they go to Vegas, it's a change of scenery and they get a bigger role. And so, you know, I think from that standpoint, it is pretty good. Uh, it's a good thing because it gives everyone a, a chance to, to show what they can do. Um, but you know, I, I do think there's, there is a limit, I feel like to that, but it's hard to determine what that number is because right. you have so many, you have so many hockey players out there. Um, every year, there's a bunch of draft prospects that are, you know, brought into the league and you have all these people that are in the AHL. Um, there's people even in other leagues like the KHL that might come over to the NHL, you know, so there's, there's definitely a lot of places where you can grab talent, I guess, which is good if you are an expansion team. Um, but you know, it's just, uh, it's finding that balance of, you know, keeping the existing teams kind of together and, but also trying to expand the league and not, you know, lose as much from the other team. So it's, I don't know, it's a, it's a very difficult thing to balance. I feel like, but I'm definitely excited for Seattle and, and we'll see if there's any other expansion teams in the future. So all in all, uh, you know, for, for a league like the NHL that's already established and have their teams and have their players, it's probably leaning more towards not overexpanding, not trying to add more and more teams. But as you, you know, go to another league, uh, like, you know, a couple episodes ago, I talked with one of my buddies about lacrosse, the new lacrosse league, where they've mm-hmm. got, uh, you know, only eight, 10 teams, eight to 10 teams. I, I'm totally yeah. blanking now, but, you know, it's a very small league and, right. For that, you got to imagine the more teams you keep throwing in, the better, because you've got these teams that have just, I mean, they're stacked with, with guys. If you know lacrosse at all, you know all the names on a team and they're all like superstars. But if you, if you expand it, you're given those others, those other guys that you might not have heard of, but are very good, you know, in their own, you're giving them the opportunity to find a team to play and, and still being able to be competitive, all the teams together. Mm -hmm. Um, so it kind of depends on the league and, and where it is, I think, yeah, you know, and how established it is and how, how big it is. But um, there's just in general, there's so many athletes out there that are, at least in my opinion, there's, there's so many athletes out there that are just probably could make it, you know, and just don't mm-hmm. ever get the chance to, because there's only a certain number of people that can play in the league. Um, and like you said, that kind of, it's, it's tough on the people making that decision on, on <sighs> how many teams and how big you want to be. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Very tough. And, and yeah, with the NHL, I mean, they, I think they're in a good, good place right now, but you know, there's just so many different things to consider like division alignment, you know, you, you kind of want to try to even that up if you can, so that yeah. there's the same amount of teams, you know, there's financial things, obviously, you know, I think expanding, maybe that increases the salary cap at some point, if you have more teams involved, you know, so yes. there's a lot of like these little, factors that, that go into it um so yeah there's <laughs> it, it's a hard it's very hard decision but yeah. you know I'm, I'm excited for seattle i think they're going to be a 
I think that it's going to be a great market. I know that Seattle really supports their sports teams and um, I'm really excited to see how it goes with them this year. Yeah. So let's actually talk about Seattle then let's talk about, you know, how their draft went, who they drafted, you know, what their team makeup is and and how we think they'll do. So um, as we got the expansion draft, a lot of people were critical of it. A lot of people feel like Seattle had a lot of high level talent, you know, mm-hmm. uh, with Carey Price, with uh, Tarasenko, with um, yeah. Domi, you know, a lot yeah. of guys that were high, high level names, high, high known names, high, high talent guys that they completely passed up on. And they went for younger, um, energetic, less known guys. And it's a way to go. You know, it's, it's a decision that you want to go starting out your franchise do you go with these guys that want to compete together, you know, as, as a team, or do you want these guys that already know that they're, you know, established they know they're good and just kind of want to put up a bunch of points potentially, or, you know, it's a, it's a, obviously a tough, another tough decision to make. And mm-hmm. you have the people that are critical of it. You have the people that think it was a good way to go, which are you? Yeah, um, I would say I'm, I was definitely shocked by the draft itself. I was expecting – the one thing that I was really shocked with was the um, amount of trades that Seattle did. You know, Vegas, my goodness, I feel like they made a trade with almost every single team um, for the expansion draft, and, and Seattle didn't do that as much. I know they made a few – um, everything was after like, yeah, it was Vegas, afterwards. Vegas was doing it during the draft, like, or, or I guess maybe beforehand even. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Seattle just basically went up to the board, said this is who we're taking from each team and that's it. Yeah. Cause I remember watching the Vegas draft and it would be like, uh, the Penguins sent over a draft pick for them to pick, take Mark Andre Fleury. You know, it was just like all these crazy, crazy things. And, uh, I was kind of expecting the same with Seattle. I thought they would do that. Um, so that was a big shocker to me. Um, so, you know, looking at the draft overall, I think that it has, they, they did some good things. Um, I will say that the philosophy is very different. And I think maybe it's because of who the GM is. You know, you think back to Vegas, uh, George McPhee was the GM who was the capital GM for a number of years. And he was in that kind of win now mode all the time yeah. where he kind of, adopted that philosophy to Vegas, like, okay, like let's get all these good NHL players. Let's uh, make some trades. Let's take advantage of all these other teams. Um, So he really just went full in on like that first year. I mean, that was a pretty, pretty good roster the first year they had it. Yes. They had some young guys like a Carlson who we didn't really know much about at the time, but they also had a lot of like pretty well-established players that, you know, we knew their names. Um, Whereas with Seattle, Ron Francis, he was a guy that was in Carolina and, you know, that was a team that was kind of building, building a young team. And you're seeing the, you know, the success that they're having now. Um, It took them a little while, but that seems to be the philosophy that Ron Francis has adopted with this Seattle team is yes, he's brought in some, some names, but they're all on the younger side. I was kind of looking at the roster here, you know, Mark Giordano, obviously he's the the oldest at 37, but for the most part, everyone else is under, under 30. Um, So it's a relatively young team and, you know, they stacked up, they got some draft picks with some trades, things like that. So I think that the, it's hard to say how this team will do. I don't think they will be as successful as Vegas. I'm pretty confident in saying that. Uh, (laughs) I don't think that's very hard to replicate. (laughs) It is, it is. But I, um, I think they will be decent. I don't think they will be, I think that maybe they will be, um, I think they might knock on the door for a potential playoff spot. That's kind of where I see them. I think they have some good pieces in place. Um, but again, the, the big thing is here, we don't know how a lot of these guys will perform. There's a lot of people that we haven't really seen play too much. Um, we know what Jared McCann and Brandon Tanev can bring to the table, and I'm kind of interested to see what they do in, in increased roles. So um, they have some good pieces in place, but – I don't see them being as success successful right away as Vegas, but I think long-term, you know, as long as these guys that they've picked up are, are the right pieces and they develop the way that they're supposed to develop and they draft. Well, I think this team will be in a really good place a few years down the road, but I just think it's like a, 
it's it's kind of interesting to think about like the GMs that drafted the teams and they've kind of adopted those philosophies that they had on their previous teams. That's yeah. the way that I took it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's interesting for sure. Yeah, so it seems like Seattle, like you said, kind of went more towards young, thinking about the future with a with a few veterans mixed in. You got yeah. the Jordan Eberle, the the, the Jonas Donskoy, um, like you said, Giordano, um, Adam Larson, a little bit older. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you got these guys that are, are there, they're, they're established in the league They you know what they're going to bring, but at the same time, you know what they're going to bring because they had that, that top level talent with them on their other teams. Right. Um, you know, Jordan Everly was playing with Matt Barzell. Um, Don Scoy was playing sometimes with, uh, McKinnon, Nathan McKinnon, you know, you got these guys yeah. who, who, who are playing with top, top, top level talent, scoring goals, putting the points. Well, now they're on this team where they don't have that other top guy with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and they are the top guy. They might get more focus, you know, from, from uh, the opponent defenseman and everything. And so it's, it's interesting to see, you know, are they going to be able to replicate the same success that they had on their old teams? Um, but at the same time, you might have these, these guys you never heard of who might be like another William Carlson where mm-hmm. you'd never heard of them. But given the chance with more minutes, more more responsibility, they might just explode. They might just just go off and 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 be the next William Carson and, and and put up this massive points. You're like, wow, where did mm-hmm. that come from? And it's it's really intriguing. And again, that kind of goes back into my aspect uh, in the last conversation. You got all this talent, and you just never know. Given the opportunity, these people can rise up and and be mm-hmm. truly truly successful. You just never know if, if they don't have as much opportunity, you know, and on their old teams, uh, a guy like Jared McCann, you know, he got more power ty- uh, power play time this last year with, with uh, Malkin being out and look what he did. He led the team in, in power play goals, you yep. know, and you got a guy like that where in the past, he never really saw power play time. And so give these guys opportunities they might prove you wrong. They might prove that, that they do belong where they are. They do, you know, they, they can make an impact in a certain way. So I, I think it's really cool. I think it's really intriguing the way that they went about it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, like I said, at least the opportunity for, for people that you don't know of to make, to make a huge impact. And I also think that the way they went about it, they left themselves so much cap room that they could sign True. free agents that they want, that they know what they're getting, that they, they're, they're going to mold them into the, into the strategy that they want to you know play with on the ice, uh, as opposed to picking some of those top name guys, they might have their own way of playing. Mm-hmm. You might not be able to mold them into the, the, the way you want your team to play. Um, so being able to, to leave that open and sign guys that you think you're able to influence how you want them to, to play and, and into the, the strategy of your, of your team Mm-hmm. Uh, it might be a better way to go about it. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought up the, the cap space too. Cause yeah, right now I think they have around 16 million uh, in cap space left. So um, I know a lot of the free agents have signed like the top ones, but you're kind of giving yourself some wiggle room because as we know, well, you know, with the penguins following them all these years, they're always trying to get rid of cap space to bring new people in. And so when you, when you spend to the cap every year, yes, that's a good thing. You know, it means that ownership is all in, but sometimes it, uh, it causes you to maybe have to overpay some people, um, you know, and then all of a sudden now it's a bad contract and you're trying to get rid of it. So, you know, Seattle, yeah. So, you know, Seattle, um, you know, I think that's kind of a good thing because, you know, maybe they try to show how great, of a city Seattle is and how great of a hockey market it is. And then even looking at next year, there's a lot of potential good free agents. Um, Just looking ahead, you know, guys like Johnny Gaudreau, Alex Barkov, you know, there's a lot of like, uh, I know that there's a chance that these guys could re-sign with their teams, but you never (laughs) know. Right. Um, So I think it's just, it's kind of a selling year for them is to sell everyone on, you know, how good can Seattle be and, you know, you look at the leadership that they have. We talked about Mark Giordano. He's 37 years old. He was the captain of the Flames for many years. Um, he was an undrafted guy too, which is yeah. kind of cool. 
Um, great story there. And then, you know, you got, you have guys like Eberle, like you said, and Jaden Schwartz signed there. He's a Stanley cup champion. Yanni Gord is a multiple Stanley cup champion now from Tampa Bay. Yep. Um, so you have some pieces here, you know, that you can plug in uh, to this team and yeah, we'll see how these young guys do and, and how they fare. Philip Grubauer. I was very surprised that they got Philip Grubauer. I was actually really surprised that Colorado um, let him get away, but um, that's a pretty good, they have pretty good goaltending with yeah. Grubauer and Chris Dreiger from um, Florida. He's a pretty good young goaltender too. So, you know, in goal, I feel like that's a big, obviously a big position in hockey. I feel like they have a pretty good tandem there and, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. They have a, they have some good players. You mentioned McCann earlier. I definitely, I, I preferred the Penguins to protect McCann, uh, that, but that's another story. But yeah. I, I'm interested to see how he does because he is definitely a guy that I could see doing well in a in a new new role, like an improved role. I know even this year we saw it with the Penguins where McCann definitely got more ice time. He was on the power play and, and he took advantage of it. So I'm interested to see how he does uh, on this new Seattle team as well. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, like you said. There's a great point with with the cap space and, and leaving yourself some room. Yes. It, it seems like you're taking a step back and not spending to the limit trying to win. But at the same time you get in these scenarios where Vegas now is, you know, with they're at the cap space and they have to basically Gave away get, flurry. <laughs> get rid of, get rid of people to make cap space or otherwise they're in trouble. They're at the, they're at the very limit. And yeah, with, with flurry, getting disrespected yet again. Um, <clears throat> but uh, even not even him, but you know, Reeves, um, you know, they, yeah. they had to not sign a couple of people. It's just, you, you put yourself in a situation spending all the way to the limit there um, that you kind of put yourself in a tough spot. So taking this, this different approach where you're leaving yourself space to be able to make a run at people in the future. Um, but not only that, but you're, you're leaving space that you don't get into trouble with the mm -hmm. people that you do have. So yep. it kind of shows in, in my opinion, kind of shows a little bit of loyalty. Uh, yeah. Know that you're, you're leaving that space to, if you, you perform on this team, we're going to resign you for, you know, and we have the space to do so as opposed to having to get rid of you. So I, I think, like you said, I think they're kind of, they're thinking of the future a little bit more, but at the same time, they put enough, enough there that they can be competitive right off the bat. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, they definitely have good pieces in place um, for them to be competitive. I think it was just more an emphasis on long term and the big picture compared to Vegas, where, you know, yes, I think no one expected them to be even themselves. They would say they never thought they'd be in the Stanley Cup final that first year. But um, I think that, yeah, Ron Francis definitely is taking a more strategic long term uh, picture philosophy for this. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to see how it goes and, and, um, you know, who knows, there's still some free agents out there. Maybe they, maybe they do sign some, some guys. I know that there's going to be a lot of bargains here now that a lot of the off season is, is starting to dwindle down and a lot of the free agents have signed already, but, um, yeah, they definitely have good pieces in place and they definitely stockpiled some draft picks. I know that they had gotten, um, the Caps goaltender at Vanacek and they, they drafted traded him back. and then they traded him right back for a second round draft. Right. Pick. So, you know, doing little things like that is, is good. I mean, it shows that they were, they were thinking about, you know, long-term. So now that they have another, they have another draft pick in the second round. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, it's good. They're, they're building a, they're building a good team, a, a younger team. Um, I, th I think is, is going to be really, really good here in a few years. Um, but at the same time, I think they're knocking on the door for a playoff spot this year, just because of the pieces that they have in place. And obviously the guys that they drafted, um, you know, they're, they drafted them for a reason, right? They did their homework on these guys. Oh, yeah. So, you know, with increased ice time with a bigger role, some of these guys may be able to succeed much more than any of us are expecting. Yeah. Yeah. So, Going back to the draft itself, do you think it's it's cool how not only they did it with Vegas, but now how they did it with Seattle, where they they set up this whole scene and they had a huge crowd there and, and they brought some of the players out that they knew they were going to draft. They brought they brought some of them out to Seattle. They came on the stage. They you know were, were cheering with the crowd and they were talking to the crowd. Do you think that was cool? I mean, I thought that was super cool. I, I, I really like the scene that they that they had there. Uh, yeah. It shows that Seattle already 
loves the team. You know, there was a bunch of people there and they were cheering them on. They were happy. Every, every name that they announced, they were like going wild, you know, mm-hmm. it might not even, it might not have even been someone that they, that they heard <laughs> of before. If you're, if you're, you know, mid to, to casual fan, uh, you might not have heard this person before, but you still, they're your player now. You know, they're, you're on your team. So yeah. Wild. I, oh I yeah. Cool. No, I, I, I love that too. I think you, you know, you want to make it a big deal because it is a big deal. It's a new team. Um, you want to, it, it's kind of like Seattle's first test to show, Hey, we deserve a hockey team and we're <laughs> going to be really excited about it. And so, you know, I think they did a good job with that. And I love bringing in some of the the players too, with the Jersey unveiling the Jersey and, yeah. you know, talking to the fans. I think that's a pretty cool opportunity for, you know, the, the fans to be there um, and everyone watching on TV, they can see some of the players and just hear them for the first time. Um, the one thing that was a little bit different this year was that I know that they recorded some of the draft picks, like, like Kevin Weeks was, um, he oh, was yeah, on yeah. different locations. And unfortunately a lot of the picks got leaked yeah. as a result of that. That would be one thing I would change because I felt like some people didn't even tune in to the, expansion draft because they already knew who was who the team was basically um so that was the one part that i think could be improved for the next one but you know i think um all in all it's a it's a good thing to do and it's a good good way to to kick off the the off season i guess you could say this year it was kind of the expansion draft first and then it was the draft then it was free agency so it was just kind of kicking off uh a quick nhl off season so um yeah it was a lot of fun It, it was cool to see Brandon Tandem was one of the guys down there. So that was pretty neat um, to see, you know, him in a different Jersey. And yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think it's a, it's a good idea. I mean, it's a, it's a big deal. It's, it's, it's uh, I know if I was in one of these expansion cities, I would definitely want to go to an event like that and, yeah. and be there for it and, and just celebrate having a, a new team to, to root for. Um, yeah. That's a big, it's a big deal. It's not just, yeah, you got you watch them on TV, you go to the games. I mean, it's a big, Thing for the city itself you know you're, you're getting more business in the city and there's just a lot of like cool things that having a sports team brings so i oh, thought absolutely. it was uh i thought it was pretty cool that they were able to do that again uh this year yes yeah, it's, it's more than just announcing a, a group of, of people more than just announcing names right you're you're getting to learn you're getting to meet and understand your team this is now mm-hmm. your team you know you've waited how long for a team in your city and here they are. I thought it was really cool that, like you said, like you said, they were able to bring players out and and they were talking to them and he kind of got to know what the players mm-hmm. liked. You know, he got to yeah. understand what Brandon Tanner was thinking when he had that profile pick <laughs> with his wide eye that. going crazy. You know, and he Being talked the ghost. <laughs> yeah, he talked about it and stuff. So it's it's just getting to know your 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 guys. You know, it's getting to know them and um and it's also getting to know the the fans, you know, as the players getting to, to see what kind of fans you're going to be playing for and how crazy and how excited they are. Um, so, yeah, I thought it was a really cool, really cool thing. A um, lot of fun, a lot of, lot of excitement and I'm looking forward to it. So all in all, Andy, are you, fa- are you a fan of the Seattle Kraken already? Or are you guys? I am. I feel like you kind of have to, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, you, you definitely, you know, I, I like to cheer for, guys like McCann and Tanov, I mean, they were both great, great penguins, great guys. Um, You know, I, I definitely enjoy them. Mark Giordano has always been like a really good professional leader, I feel like. And um, I have Jamie Alexiak too. I forgot they got him too, former penguin. So um, yeah, I think, you know, when you see these new teams, it's, um, it's exciting. I think it's exciting for the league and and I dig the jerseys a lot too. I, I like them a lot. I know some people may not like them as much, but I, yeah. I like them. I like the colors. I do. Yeah. Um, so I feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, definitely rooting for them to have success. And obviously Ron Francis uh, has a lot of penguins connections as well, being a mm-hmm. former player. So, yeah. you know, they have a lot of guys on that team that, that it's e- they're easy to root for. And um, it helps that they're in the other conference too. So it's like, eh, well, they're in the Western conference. We'll, we'll cheer not, for them. Yeah. They're not playing against the Penguins, but exactly. Yeah. <laughs> They'll play them what twice a year. So yeah. Um, yeah. So that, I think maybe that makes it a little bit easier. Maybe if it was like someone in our division, it might be a little different, but yeah. Um, yeah I think they have a lot of, a lot of cool things. And, and we kind of touched on it earlier. Seattle's been waiting for this for a while. I know that they've, um, yeah. it's a good sport city. And I like to see, cities like that rewarded. Um, and I'm hoping that they'll be 
competitive here soon, which I think they will. I think they have a good chance. Yeah. 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 I, I'm definitely uh, from the moment that they announced uh, that there was going to be a team in Seattle from the moment they announced that the team name, uh, the team, Jersey colors, logo, everything I've been paying attention to it the whole time. I'm, I don't know why I've never been to Seattle, but I'm a, I'm a big fan <laughs> of all the Seattle teams. All, I mean, it's Seahawks. Yeah. I like the Seahawks the Mariners, not so much. But um, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Kraken already. I think it's cool. I didn't think they were going to name it the Kraken. I thought that that was just the, the fans wanted to be that. I didn't think they were actually going to do it. And when they did that, I was like, this is awesome. I'm yeah. re- release the Kraken, man. That's awesome. So um, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan already. Um, not quite, you know, Penguins level fan or anything right, like that. Right. But, but um, yeah, I, I, I'm excited. I'm, I'm going to be cheering on the, the Kraken. I, I'm, I'm excited to, to see them play. I want to have to see them have success. Um, I'm a fan. I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, I know you mentioned with the logo and the colors. I like the, the colors a lot. I'm, I, I'm, blue is my favorite color, uh, blue and turquoise. Here. So um, the colors that they have, I like a lot. Uh, a lot of people are, are critical of the, of the logo with just the B and an S. Uh, but mm. I know when they released it, they had a whole segment on what it's you know more depth of what it stands for and and what it means to the city itself and everything so i kind of understand a little bit more uh behind why they chose just an s instead of like an actual like kraken mm-hmm. or anything um so i understand yeah i think they could have probably done a little bit more in in my opinion but at the same time like i said i understand what they what they why they did it and so i, I i'm okay with it i think it's cool um but the colors itself, the jersey, I think they look slick. I think they're nice. Um, so I, I'm a fan. I'm ready for. I'm ready to see them play. I'm ready to cheer them on. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited for the Seattle Kraken to be a part of the NHL. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be cool. And <clears throat> you know, yeah, I, I, I don't mind the logo either. I know it's an S, but it, you know, it's a, it's a cool font. And and there's a reason they do that. You know, even the Pirates right now, they have the P. Yeah. Um, that's like one of their main logos. So, you know, there are a lot of other teams and other sports that do something similar to that. And, um, yeah, it was a cool event too. Cause they brought in all the people from Seattle, like beast mode, Marshawn Lynch. That yeah. was awesome. When he did that one pick, that yeah. was great. They had like, yeah. had like Macklemore who's from that area and, yeah. you know, a lot of different people from, from Seattle. So, you know, clearly they're very excited about it and, you know, me and you are excited about it too. I'll definitely be following them. Uh, um, a little bit here when they're on TV and, you know, now with uh, ESPN getting hockey back, that'll be interesting. Um, so it, yeah, a lot of exciting stuff coming up this year. I'm, I'm definitely ready for the puck to be dropped here. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, and then you mentioned it's, it's easy to root for a new team. And I think that's true. I think anytime you have this new team and they're kind of labeled the underdog right off the bat, I know for 100%. me, I'm, I'm always, I'm always big on the underdog. Scenario. Me too. <laughs> um, so I think it'll be cool to see and who knows, they might prove everybody wrong and, and have success like Vegas did. You just never know. You just never Mm -hmm. know. So, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I'm a big guy. I'm a big guy that roots for like underdogs too. And I feel like these, these teams instantly become underdogs, especially when we, I know we talked about like previous expansion teams. Like I know when the sharks, uh, the San Jose sharks came on, like their team was, absolutely horrible uh, <laughs> and i remember i actually remember hearing stories of um mario lemieux like all the players would love to go to san jose because they get like seven points in the game and oh i gosh. think one time mario got like seven he was like yeah but i should have had 10 <laughs> so <laughs> i you should know, have been double digits oh, it was a bad day yeah typical mario lemieux thing to say <laughs> yeah but um you know yeah so it's it's cool that these teams are at least you know they're going to be competitive right off the bat, which is nice uh, for the, for the city. Not that, you know, even if they weren't competitive, I think Seattle would, would really be still excited about it. But when you have the winning team, you know, it just, uh, it really makes everything a whole lot better. I mean, we saw it with the pirates in 2013 to 2015. I mean, that was, uh, those were some of my favorite years um, just watching baseball. So, you know, having that feeling with Seattle, um, the Kraken, I think that'll be a, that'll be a pretty cool opportunity for those fans to, to experience, uh, NHL hockey and hopefully they'll, hopefully they'll do well. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So there we go. We've got the new team. Uh, they're set. They've got their players. They've got their coaches. They've got their GM. They've got their fans. Let's see what happens. Release the Kraken officially release the Kraken. Yeah, it's official. It's <laughs> official. It's official.
All right. Um, so that just about wraps it up. We got, um, so I, I kind of touched on my bright story of the week um, was the, with the Olympics and especially with the uh, Flora, Flora Duffy from Bermuda. Um, Andy, do you have any, any bright stories to share with us today? Yeah, you know, it's kind of along the same lines. Um, I feel like I've, and I kind of want to bring it up because this is a podcast. I've noticed that um, in Pittsburgh lately, specifically, there have been, uh, there's been a drastic increase in podcasts. Just, I feel like around the Pittsburgh sports too, there's a ton of them out now. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I know that if you look back at like many, many years ago, like even in like 2012 or something, there were only a few of them. But now I think what we're seeing right now is that everybody has a voice. And I wanted to also um, congratulate you. I know you saw it. You had like 750 downloads for Bright Connections. I think that's awesome. You've been doing this for a year or two. Um, you know, I think I think just supporting everyone is, is really what I've seen is that we have now, there's all these podcasts out there now, but I've noticed that they're, they're all cheering for each other. You know, like everybody's going on each other's podcast. Um, everybody's promoting every, you know, different podcasts. We're all kind of just supporting each other. And I think that's really cool. And that's something that I've noticed a lot lately, just, you know, being on uh, Twitter and, you know, social media, just seeing everyone support each other. And I think that that's just really cool because I do think that, you know, we all have a voice and you should use it if you're passionate about something. I know you mentioned it in your um, 750 download, um, you know, post that you put out, you connected with someone 750 times or 750 people listen to it. You know, that's a great way to look at things. And I feel like that's the mentality that a lot of people in our generation and even, you know, the younger generations are taking is, you know, we have these resources on the internet. We have such a great opportunity to share these stories and, and um, our wisdom and, you know, connect with new people and make new friendships, build relationships. It's such a great, great thing that we have. And um, it's just been really cool to see everyone support each other and um, doing different fundraisers to benefit, you know, people that may not be as fortunate, you know, there's just a lot of great things going on right now in in the podcast community specifically. And um, that's just something that I've really noticed over the past, like few weeks specifically, it's just a lot of supporting each other, even though they're kind of competing against one another, it kind of goes back to the Olympics. Um, But we're all different in our own ways. We all have different opinions. We all may do things a little bit differently, but at the end of the day, we're all just you know, passionate about what we do and love what we do and we're supporting each other. So that was, that was my big takeaway from the past few weeks that I wanted to bring up. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. That that fits in perfectly with kind of the whole concept of the day is, is even though you could be competing with each other, you know, podcasts are all trying to get, they're all trying to get views and listens and, and, and people to tune into their story and their voice. But at the same time, like you said, it's, it's more than just the competition. It's supporting each other. And that was, that was a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. That was really cool. Um, it's, it, it comes down to understanding each other and, and respecting each other, whether you have a different opinion or not. And, and we all can do that. And that was awesome story that you brought up that people in the podcast community are so supportive of each other. And, uh, I know I do try to, I try to do as much as I can as well. Um, just trying to, to, listen to what I can or, or um, you know, spread a good word about, about ones that I can um, talk about it, share it, whatever I can do. So yeah, that's a, that's a great thing. I'm glad you brought that up. And like I said, it fits in perfectly within the whole day's, the whole day's concept. So awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Thanks, Andy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's, it's really cool. And um, cause I do think maybe if we look back, many years ago um there may not be as much as support back then but now it definitely everyone is supporting each other and um it's just really really cool to see that that everyone's helping each other out and you know we all have our different viewpoints and we do things differently but you know at the end of the day we're we're just doing what we love and and i think um you know that's all you can ask for in life so it's uh it's been really cool to see yeah absolutely all right all right, guys, that'll that'll do it. That'll wrap it up on today's episode. Um, thanks for joining, uh, Andy. Thank you so much for for all your your thoughts on on the expansion draft. That was a lot of fun, and yeah. obviously, again, thank you for the bright story. Um, thanks for joining me. Appreciate it.
Yeah. Thanks for having me. This is a lot of fun. I love, love the hockey talk. So anytime yeah. uh, anyone wants to talk hockey, I'm always down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Same. Me too. But yep. Absolutely. A lot of fun. Um, go Kraken. Go Kraken. Yes. Go Kraken. Get go your jerseys today. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. I do need to get some kind of merch. I think maybe a hat or at least a t-shirt or something. Uh, but guys, as always, um, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Um, appreciate you being here. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, as always, if you could uh, hit that like button, hit that that thumbs up on the YouTube video, um, share your thoughts on the Kraken, the expansions in general, the Olympics, um, share your comments on the video. Uh, if you can, you know, if you're listening to the to the podcast, please um, like, you know, like the com- the podcast, give it a rating, um, share the podcast, whatever you can do to help out is, is greatly appreciated. And I, I can't thank you enough for it. Um, and then as always, if you can check out the social media as well. Uh, follow that and do what you can to continue to make the world bright each and every day. Uh, we talked about it, even though you're competitive, even though you're a uh, different opinion than everybody else or than other people, you can still put that aside and, and respect each other. So continue to do that in your daily life, do what you can be respectful and uh, just be bright, be kind to each other and keep doing your thing. Guys, take care. Have a wonderful and bright week. We'll see you next time.